There are several ways to stop Armageddon. Some propose a sudden massive impact that literally knocks an Earth-bound asteroid off course. Others suggest the mission can be accomplished without a collision by using other means, such as a standoff nuclear explosion to push the asteroid out of harm's way. You detonate the weapon some small distance off the surface. The main effect then is for energy, uh, hopefully in the form of neutrons, penetrating the surface. And you heat it and you blow off pieces of the surface. It's over a fairly large area, so you diminish the chance of breaking it up. There's one problem, though. Nukes are banned from space by international treaty. But if an asteroid threatens our very survival, will that really matter? In terms of mitigation strategies, I'm most impressed with the use of the nuclear weapons. And I, I think it's the most efficient. Uh, sure, it's not been tested, but neither has anything else that we have. And also, just from a personal standpoint, I would much rather deflect an object than sacrifice North America. And if I had to go to court afterwards, that would be just fine with me. But you don't have to nuke an asteroid in order to nudge it. Safer methods include using solar sails. These orbiting reflectors, according to advocates, could concentrate the sun's rays on an asteroid. The heat generated would vaporize surface rock, creating a jet of material that would propel the object away from an Earth-bound trajectory. Then there are lasers. If they're powerful enough to cut the strongest metal and perform delicate surgeries, then maybe a more powerful version could deflect an asteroid. The laser is very attractive because it's more economical. It costs less, basically. It's easier to do. It could be a robotic spacecraft. The laser uses a beam of light to the asteroid, which causes material to fly off from the asteroid, which then pushes the asteroid. You don't have to carry the material up there that's going to exert the force on the asteroid. The laser can be very precisely directed. It's very gradual. It can be done over a three-month period. Researchers discovered a laser's potential by accident in the 80s while experimenting with short pulses on a wafer made of silicon, material similar to the surface of an asteroid. We basically set up a movie camera and timed it with a laser so we could take step action shots of the material leaving the surface of the silicon wafer. And we were surprised to discover what we found. That is, we can actually see these chunks of material coming off and see them vaporize. It was a scientific discovery as well as a new technology. As significant as that discovery was, it's still a big leap from a silicon wafer to an asteroid. But it's one that can be made, proponents claim, with a laser pulse 5,000 times more powerful than those we use every day on Earth. This super laser, powered by existing rockets and solar panels, could park as many as five kilometers away from an asteroid, then use a series of short pulses rather than a continuous one to deflect it. The reason for the pulse is that the very short pulse can deliver enough intensity to the surface of the asteroid so that the material explodes off from the asteroid. When that material explodes off from the asteroid, it pushes the asteroid in the direction that you want to send it. You also need the very short pulse because as the laser pulse strikes the surface of the asteroid, it creates a cloud of material that emerges from the asteroid. That cloud of material will absorb any additional light that's sent 
to the asteroid. So it's extremely important to get all of the light energy into that area of the asteroid in that very short time before that black cloud forms. To some experts, lasers and even solar sails could work, at least in principle. The intense light they both emit is adjustable and adaptable to all types of asteroids. And the ejected material, mere puffs of dust, would pose no threat to Earth. But their potential drawbacks could prove prohibitive. Keeping the laser source or a large solar mirror in the correct place is very difficult to do and has to be done for a long time. With regard to the solar reflection also, then there's a question of the dust that's blown out. What is it going to do to the solar mirror? And so there are significant long-term problems. And so whether that could be done in the future, we don't know. At the present time, it's certainly outside of our capability. There are continuous lasers now that produce more power, 25 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, that have been made for military purposes that have more power than is necessary. The kind that we're proposing would require taking the ultra-short pulse lasers and increasing the power up to at least five kilowatts, maybe 10 kilowatts. A focused effort could probably do this within five to 10 years, could actually be done if there was an intent to do so. And why stop at just one laser? One day, a fleet of them could be permanently stationed around Earth to act as a defensive shield against asteroids that threaten us. It would avoid the danger of having a last minute scramble to solve the problem and having to send up nuclear devices, nuclear weapons into space trying to blow up the asteroid, which is probably a bad idea. Lasers show potential as asteroid deflectors, but it'll be a long time before they're a viable option. Until then, there's another mitigation proposal that deserves serious attention. It's the brainchild of two former astronauts who insist it's the only real way to stop Armageddon. Of all the proposals to stop Armageddon, the most effective one may be a contraption called a gravity tractor. For such a complicated undertaking, it operates on a very simple principle. We know that everything out there in space has a gravitational pull. So asteroids themselves have a gravitational pull. And we also know that a spaceship interacts gravitationally with the asteroid. So if the spaceship were to come close enough to the asteroid, it could then begin to attract the asteroid slowly out of its course, if we can get it in time. Developed by the B612 Foundation, named after the asteroid in the literary classic, The Little Prince, the gravity tractor is gaining popularity due to the efforts of its chief advocates, two former astronauts, Ed Liu and Rusty Schweikert. The gravity tractor is a very weak deflection concept, but it's very precise. And so we don't recommend using it for what we call the primary deflection. That is, to make the asteroid miss the Earth. But once you've done that with a kinetic impact, which is a very imprecise maneuver, then you come in with the gravitational tractor and you make a very precision adjustment on what you've done with the primary deflection. The gravity tractor is one of the very few asteroid deflection mechanisms that is in any way realistic. The only two that are probably realistic right now are kinetic impactor, where you just basically run into uh, the asteroid with a spacecraft, or the gravity tractor. Apart from those two, most of the rest of those are pretty much science.